Are you ready to dive into the world of programming with C-Sharp? Whether you're brand new to programming or switching from another programming language, this video will guide you step by step into the things you need to do to learn C-Sharp effectively in the year 2025. We'll cover everything from setting up your tools to choosing your learning pathways. And by the end of this video, you'll know exactly where to start and how to grow your skills. So let's get into it. C-Sharp is one of the most versatile and in-demand programming languages today. It is used for building web apps, mobile apps, games, desktop apps, even cloud solutions. Plus, with tools like .NET and Visual Studio Code getting better every year, there's no better time to start learning program. The Stack Overflow developer survey shows that 27% of developers use C-Sharp and it came as one of the top programming languages of 2024. C-Sharp is ranked as one of the top five popular programming languages also. Let's talk about the tools you need to become a C-Sharp programmer in the year 2025. First, you need your tools, definitely. What is a firma without is O and Tractor and all the mechanized tools available in the world today, you know. So the tools you need, I generally recommend for beginners to use Visual Studio Code because it's lightweight, it's free and works across Windows, Mac, and Linux operating system. So whatever operating system you choose as a beginner, or maybe you're coming from other industry or from any other programming languages, you are right home with C Sharp. So first thing you need to do is download and install the .NET SDK to your computer. And the next step is that you go to the Visual Studio Code website and download that installer for your computer operating system and then install it following the instructions available to you and once both are installed the next thing you have to do is install the c-sharp dev kit extension from the visual studio code marketplace and you're pretty much ready to go this setup essentially ensures that you have everything you need to get started with coding in c -sharp. Once you've installed all your tools, you're pretty much ready to get started writing your very first programming language. But I will not talk about learning the language and writing the code itself. I will just walk you through step-by-step -step the concept you need to learn in the fundamental section of programming with c -sharp. So the first thing you need to learn is the basic syntax of c -sharp itself. So you'll explore the structure, or for the C-sharp program is how to write and run a simple Hello World application along with you no know, putting comments in there. And the next thing you want to learn after writing your first Hello World application is data types and variables. Here you will understand primitive data types like int, float, and string, and learn how to declare and initialize variables for your program. Next thing you will learn after data types is operators. So you need to get familiar with arithmetic, relational, logical, and assignment operators in programming. And then after that, you learn control flows, which is how you use conditionals and loops to control the flow of your program, how your program branches from one place to another. And then the next thing after that is you learn arrays and collections. So you learn how to manipulate arrays and collections like lists of types, dictionaries. And then after that, which I think is one of my favorite things actually in programming is functions and methods. So you learn how to define methods, perform method overloading, understand and how to pass arguments into methods. And then my top likeness of C sharp, and of course, many other kind of languages that are kind of related to C sharp is object oriented concepts. So here you dive into the concepts of classes, objects, access modifiers, encapsulation, inheritance, and polymorphism. And once you've learned all that, we all know that when you write code, sometimes you encounter errors. So the next thing you want to learn after that is exception handling. Exception handling simply talks about how you manage errors with try catch blocks and other kind of advanced methods of doing that. And then you then learn about file input and output, and then you learn about language integrated query, aka link. So you explore to filter, select, and sort data. And then right after that you would learn about asynchronous programming which is where you understand the basics of tax and parallel programming and then you also want to learn about debugging and testing where you familiarize yourself essentially with your IDE the debugging tools available to you and then the various unit testing frameworks available in the market then Optionally, you can explore the .NET libraries and frameworks where you know uh, common namespaces, the .NET standard library, and all those nice baked frameworks inside of C-Sharp. And then you might decide optionally to go the advanced way. Uh, and if you feel, and that's of course, if you're feeling adventurous, look into things like delegates, events, and dependency injection. But generally for the basics, you're pretty much covered with all those topics I mentioned earlier on, loops, control flow, data types, and all that. Once you've learned the fundamentals of programming with C-Sharp, the next thing you want to do is 
pick your pathway because learning how to write console apps and hello world is not just the end of the world loops is not the end of the world the exciting part is actually deciding your pathway so let me break those pathways down for you in a few simple steps now in c sharp i mentioned earlier in some of my videos and some of the presentation i've done many 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 times over that c sharp is like the one ring to rule them all so the pathways available for you as a c sharp developer is one you can be a web developer it means you use tools like asp.net core to build modern websites and apis and you create your web apps you use things like um, repository patterns and units of work and all those nice frameworks available to you to write robust web applications you can also be a game developer so with tools like units units is like the platform to go to generally to build uh 2d and 3d games in the world today so you probably say oh no people don't do this anymore you could still be a desktop application developer with c sharp so you can create tools and business apps using things like wpf wpf stands for windows presentation foundation and then also you can be a cloud developer where you learn uh, I also use the C Sharp SDKs for Azure to write cloud apps. So you build scalable serverless applications, even write on extensions for Azure, deploy your own tools using C Sharp and make use of the extensions, the hundreds of Microsoft Azure services available to you today. And also my fun part of C Sharp programming is mobile development. So you can use .NET MAUI multi-platform application user interface to write cross-platform apps for windows mac android ios and then lastly you can also use c sharp develop iot applications so we build apps for internet of things basically now each of this pathway has its own tools and set of uh uniqueness that you need to learn when you're doing them so they differ in some many ways but of course you still write c sharp the fundamentals of c sharp is what you use to write anything depending on whatever framework and whatever pathway you choose and if you so feel you can switch from one pathway to another or even combine multiple pathways for example i can write web apps i can do mobile apps and i can also do cloud apps so kind of three uh, out of everything i have not have not ventured into games yet i probably will i probably may never venture into games nobody knows i guess we'll find out now after you've decided your pathways i just want to give this a sort of a bonus section is the resources you need to learn c sharp now there are a lot of resources, resources on the internet to learn c sharp free and paid resources so with uh free resources of course the first one i will introduce to you is my playlist of videos where you can actually learn c sharp for free i'll drop the link somewhere in the card showing here or in the video description i'm being coming so be sure to check them out it's a pretty comprehensive playlist although i use the older version of .NET and c sharp in the code it is pretty much still valid in this age and time i'll probably do a more updated version of it once i have some breathing space to actually do that but do that video is still pretty much valid for this age and time that's one thing i love about c sharp the tutorial you know for learning c sharp 10 years ago is still much valid today the other one is microsoft learn which contains the official microsoft tutorials and then if you are a book kind of person you can check the c sharp 10 and .NET 6 modern cross-platform development by mac j price it's an excellent book for beginners and also you can just go on a general search on youtube for platforms like free code camp code lead up and of course if you're feeling like paying you can go to platforms like Pluralsight and udemy for some c sharp courses now, i'll drop with you and leave with you this final bonus section tips for success tips for learning c sharp effectively the first thing which i advise anyone in any field whatsoever even if it's not programming is practice daily you want to write code every day even if it's just for 30 minutes practice your trade daily that is how you get better at it and of course if you want to do two hours it's okay but at least try to write your code every day so that you keep fresh in your mind you have the muscle memory to build projects and stuff now the next step after practicing daily is that you build projects you don't learn by just cramming you don't learn by just knowing the syntax you learn by actually building active projects so you want to start small build a calculator app build a to-do app and then after that you gradually take on bigger challenges and the third one which i also advise generally is that you join community with others on reddit slack stack overflow and github even if you have physical communities around you join those communities and then you will definitely grow and then of course stay updated 
follow the .NET blog, attend online C-Sharp meetups so you can keep learning and knowing the new nuances and updates in the system. Of course, one thing I recommend for you is always watch .NET conference that happens every year around October, November. It's a very fantastic conference for you to watch to see what is new in the world of C-Sharp and I bet you your life will never remain the same. Pretty much it for today's guide. I hope this roadmap gives you a clear starting point to learn C Sharp. If you found this helpful, I think you will love this video and this playlist. You should also hit the like button and subscribe for more beginner friendly tech tutorials like this one. And let me know in the comment sections which parts were you excited to explore. Until next time, happy coding.